There were some things that were really obvious that we knew we wanted to include, certain things that are clear treasures of the collection. And then there were other things that, you know, we really only came across because we were really digging. Um, and so there are a few kind of quirky surprises. And for the most part, it's really the, the, the creme de la creme of our collection, the real masterpieces. Almost everything in the gallery was made, was, would have been printed by the photographer around the time that the photograph was made. We also are t trying to tell a story, so um, it's about kind of filling in gaps and, and making sure that, that the work, you know, that the, the pieces work with each other. On this wall will be a photograph by Roger Fenton of Roslyn Chapel, and it's um, a really appropriate piece to put here, I think, because it's a photograph of a doorway through which you see a kind of courtyard and another doorway and another doorway, so you really get the sense of a vista and of a glimpsing into a space that opens up, and so that's exactly what your experience will be walking into this gallery. This is obviously just the, uh, just the tip of the iceberg, if you like, and what's going to be really interesting is seeing the show or the uh, exhibition change over the months and years and uh, explore the depths of the uh, collection. v and has had a history and a long tradition of collecting photography that goes back to the foundations of the museum. It's also a way of um, charting a kind of chronology of unfolding styles, processes and techniques and some of the big names who've used photography in, for creative, poetic, expressive purposes. There's nowhere else in London where you can see that laid out in front of you and you can see pictures from the 1840s and the 1940s and in the same gallery. And to see how different artists and artists using photography or people who like to call themselves simply photographers use uh, the basics of light, time, lenses um, and, and um, light sensitive surfaces to solve uh, visual problems. This is uh, something that encapsulates that idea of a picture which could be read on one level about uh, informing you about what this bucolic, this rural scene looks like. But the title suggests that he's looking at this, this scene as a reflection, the church is reflected in the water and that, that itself is uh, uh, like photography. Photography is a reflection of the real world. It's a portrait of Cecil Beaton's sister, Nancy, mm. and um, she's dressed as a shooting star. <laughs> um, Straight out of Beaton's imagination, I guess. Yeah, well, she's on her way to a society ball. This dress is made up of cellophane, mm. um, which just instantly creates sparkle. Mm. Um, it's one of these pictures that I can almost hear. <laughs> with this and you could almost see the colour in the black and white for some reason as well. It yes. doesn't need to be coloured, does it? Yeah. Which is great. It was also um, acknowledged by Henry Cole, who was the first director, who himself was an amateur photographer, yeah. that it could be a medium of poetic personal expression in its own right. Mm -hmm. So it was understood as being a, a sophisticated medium, like a, um, like a language really, like mm. a visual language. And if you compare it with language, I think it was understood that that language could be used to write a shopping list <laughs> or it could be used to write a poem. So this is another fantastic resource for Britain and the seemingly ever-expanding photographic community. It could be used as a jumping off point for further study, possibly using the v and own collection, or um, perhaps just to um, intrigue and inspire as someone taking pictures for themselves uh, to record and make sense of their own world.